Hi kids, how are you all? I hope you all must be fine, right? So today we are going to read about class 5 science Olympiad. And in class 5 science Olympiad, which chapter we are going to read? We are going to continue the chapter that is force, work and energy. Okay, so we have already discussed some questions of this chapter and in today's session we are going to discuss some more questions of this chapter. Okay, so are you all ready for it? Yes, so let's get started. Our first question, the head of an X is wide at one end and pointed at the other to help cut the trim trees. The X head is an example of head. Option A, a pulley. B, a wheel and axle. C, a wedge. D, an inclined plane. So it is asked that the head of an X, okay, the head of an axe, it is wide at one end and pointed at the other end, right? So, we know that. So, so that it helps us to cut and trim the trees. So, the X head is an example of what? So, X head, this uh, X head, this is combination of two inclined plane. Two inclined plane that join together, right? So, we know that when two inclined plane join together, we call them arch wedge. So, here the X, it is an example of a witch. Got it? So, here the correct answer is option C. Coming to the next question. The picture shows a jar with its lid. What kind of a simple machine is a jar lid? Option A, ramp. B, pulley. C, screw. D, wedge. So, the picture shows a jar with its lid and what kind of simple machine is a jar lid so what kind of simple machine what do you think if you know the answer you can write in the comment section okay so what we do uh, we take the jar and we put the lid on it right so we tie the lid we can lose the lid so what is there there is a structure above which we are trying to uh, tighten the lead or trying to um, that uh, lose the lead right so this is just screw this is just screw and here the correct answer is option c screw so the jar lead it acts as the screw got it coming to the next question which of these would you use to remove the box from the truck option a lever B, an inclined plane. C, a wheel and axle. D, a pulley. In the question, it is asked, which of these would you use to remove the box from the truck? So, we have to remove a heavy box from the truck. What we will do? It is not easier for us to carry, right? It will be heavier. So, what we can do? We can use an inclined plane like this. So, if an inclined plane is there, then we can easily remove the box from the truck or we can uplift the box to the truck, right? So, here the correct answer is option B, that is an inclined plane, okay? Next question, that is, why is it easier to draw water from a well using a pulley instead of simply pulling a bucket off with a rope? Option A, the pulley helps us change the direction of the force. Option B, the pulley gives us the energy to pull the water off. Option C, the water weighs much more when a pulley is used. Option D, the water is pulled through a certain distance with a pulley. <coughs> so here it is asked, why it is easier to draw water from a well using a pulley instead of a simply pulling a bucket off. So, have you seen ever well? You must have seen, right? So, have you ever tried to um, pull the bucket of water with a rope? Hmm? You must not have tried your kids, right? Or you should not try also. So, if you have ever noticed what they do, they try, uh, the, they fill up the bucket with water and they just pull it out. So, uh, it becomes heavier for us. So, how can we simplify that? So, we can use the pulley. So, here the rope will be there and when we with the help of the pulley with the help of the rope when we try to pull the bucket of water so here what happens the pulley it helps us to change the direction of the force it is rolling right it helps us to change the direction of the force and it becomes um, easier for us to draw water from the pulley. okay 
So here the correct answer is option A. The pulley helps us change the direction of the force. Coming to the next question. Rhea uses a down, downward pulling force on the rope to make the blind go up. Which simple machine is being used? Option A. Pulley. B. Lever. C. Wheel. D. Inclined plane. So Rhea uses a downward pulling force on the rope to make the blind go up. So which simple machine is being used? So but here we do. We can just uh, downward we can pull the rope. Okay. And it goes up. So what is going on? So it is type of pulling. Right. When we uh, pull the rope then it is going up. So it is uh, working as a pulley. So here the correct answer is option A that is pulling. Okay. Coming to the next question. Throw a ship is heavy, uh, sorry, though a ship is heavier than an iron ball, it floats on water while iron ball sinks. Why does this happen? Option A, an iron ball is round and ship is flat. Option B, an iron ball is small and ship is large. Option C, the weight of the ship is same as that of the water it displaces. Option D, a ship has to save the life of many people. So, C. Here uh, the question is asked, though a ship is heavier than an iron ball, uh, it floats on water while iron ball sinks. We know ship is heavier than iron ball, right? But still the ship floats on water. But the iron ball, you, um, if you try, you can take an iron ball and when you dip it in the water, it will sink. So why it is happening? It is happening because the weight of the ship, if the ship, it is having certain weight, right? The weight of the sieve, it is same as the um, that of the water it displaces. So when the sieve is uh, floating on the water, sieve is on the water, it displaces some amount of water. Okay. So this uh, weight of the sieve, it is same as the what amount of water it displaces. That's why it does not sink. Got it? So here correct answer is option C. The next question, match the columns. Column 1, pulley, wedge, screw. Column 2, to fix two objects together, to lift heavy objects, to cut objects. So, pulley, what do we do with pulley? Can you tell? We usually use the pulley to lift heavy objects, right? Yes. So, here, pulley, that is to lift heavy objects. I can write P here. Wedge. So, what do we do with the wedge? What is wedge? Two inclined planes are joined together, right? Uh, and uh, what do we, uh, example, knife and X, these things are there. So, here what we do, wedge, we use them to cut objects, right? So, here I can write Q. Next one is screw. What does screw do? It fixes two objects together, right? Yes, so uh, the jar lid with the jar we can fix it like that only. So for screw it is to fix two objects together. So I can write here R. Got it everyone? Coming to the next question. Which of the following activities involves the use of levers? 1. Using your arms to lift a handbag. 2. Using scissors to cut cloth. 3. Using a <coughs> wheelbarrow to transfer tools. Option A, only 1 and 2, B, only 1 and 3, C, only 2 and 3, D, 1, 2 and 3. In the question, it is asked which of the following activities involves the use of levers. So, what is lever? Lever, that is a simple machine. Here, um, there is a fixed point, right? So, here fulcrum is there. It is a, uh, so, it is a fixed point is there. Hmm. And in one side, we are giving effort and in the other side, load is there. We are giving the load. So, a fixed point should be there like fulcrum. Then load and effort should be there. Then we can call it as lever. And it helps us to make our work easier. Okay. So, in which case we are using it? Or we can use our arms to lift the handbag. So, it is also example of lever. Using scissors to cut cloth, it is also also having this fulcrum load and effort. So, it is also example of lever. Right. And 
uh, using a wheelbarrow to transport tools it is also the example so here the correct answer is option d 1 2 and 3 okay so, coming to the next question to which class of lever stapler belongs option a class 1 lever b class 2 lever c class 3 lever d inclined plane so the class stapler it is the class 3 lever so what happens in case of class 3 lever have you remember we have discussed it in our previous session in the class 3 lever effort it is present in the middle then fulcrum at one end and load at other end so here it is the fulcrum okay uh, it is the fulcrum right uh, it is connected somewhere and we are giving effort which is in the middle and load is there so it is the example of class 3 right coming to the next question which of the following simple machine belongs to the same order of lever as that of scissors option a pliers b fire tongs c a hand pump and d a wheelbarrow so it is asked which of the following simple machine belong to the same order of lever as that of scissors so what happens here in case of scissors in the center fulcrum is there it is the fixed point right and in a one end a load is there and in other end uh, we are putting the effort right we are giving so in the one end load is there in the other end we are giving the effort okay so if fulcrum is in the middle then it is the first class Okay, so we have to find out that among the pliers, fire tongs, a hand pump and wheelbarrow, uh, which one is the first class lever. So here the correct answer is option A that is pliers. In pliers also fulcrum that is the fixed point. It is present in the middle. In the one side uh, load is given, in the other side effort is given. Okay, so here the correct answer is option A that is the pliers. Coming to the next question. Dash is an inclined plane wound around a cylinder. So, the correct answer here that is the screw. What happens in case of screw? Uh, you are looking to these things. So, this is an inclined plane. Okay. Uh, it is a fixed rod like structure and around it the inclined plane is formed. That is what a screw is. Right. So, correct answer is option A that is the screw. Next question, dash consists of two inclined planes that meet at a sharp edge. Option A, wedge, B, screw, C, wheel, D, axle. So, we know that two inclined planes that meet at the sharp edge, that is the wedge, right? So, correct answer is option A, that is the wedge. So, X is there, knife is there, right? Yes. Coming to the next question. When an object is immersed in water, it experiences death. Option A, upthrust. B, pulley. C, lever. D, none of this. So, you can see here. We can see here an object is there. So, it is the object and it is immersed in water so when this object is immersed in water what is happening uh, the object it is having certain weight right it is having its weight so this weight it acts on the downward direction right and uh, when it is immersed in water uh, so water it tries to push it up okay so it experiences an up thrust it is applying some force on the object towards up. That is what we call as up thrust. So here the correct answer is option A that is the up thrust. Right? Coming to the next question. When an object is immersed in water, it experiences an up thrust equal to the weight of the water displaced by it. 
it is according to option a archimedes principle b gravitation c brownian motion d none of these we just discuss this question right so when we are immersing on the an object in water it experiences an up thrust and this up thrust it is equal to the weight of the water displaced by it so uh, it is uh, the water it is uh, giving the force that is the up thrust and it is equal to the weight of the water displaced by it when we are immersing an object in water so it will displace some water right it will displace some water it is occupying the uh, space it will displace some water that is um, equal to the up thrust and it is according to the archimedes principle got it everyone so it is according to the archimedes principle so here the correct answer is option a got it coming to the last question of today's session that is friction produces heat which of the following is true? Option A, it is always a disadvantage. B, it is not always a disadvantage. C, it is always an advantage. D, none of these. So, here it is given friction produces heat. So, friction, <coughs> uh, so when one body is moving, okay, the other body, you can see here, when one body is moving, it is moving in this direction. At that time, the tip, uh, here friction is given to the body by the table. So, in which direction movement is there? In the opposite direction, friction is there. Right? So, this friction, it produces heat. And uh, it is also a disadvantage because uh, in machines, the machinery part, when it undergoes friction, it produces heat and it damages, um, uh, slowly, slowly, it damages the machine parts also, right? But it is not always a disadvantage, like, uh, see, uh, suppose it is a winter season, right? And we are feeling cold, our hands are, our palms are cold. So, what we do? We do rubbing, right? So, this rubbing, it is also a friction. And when we rub our hand, after some time, uh, we feel better. Why? Because heat is produced during this rubbing or during this friction, right? So, uh, friction, it produces heat. It sometimes, it is um, not good for us. Okay, sometimes we can take it as disadvantage, but it is not always a disadvantage. Okay, so here the correct answer is option. Got it everyone? So, this much for today's session. Let's meet you in the next session. Till then, read mindfully. So, meet you soon. Bye-bye everyone.